Well, hello, good morning. This is Pastor Steve speaking from Global Connections Church, Dr. Steve. And uh, here I am again in my hammock and uh, in uh, my library and listening to music, uh, reading the Bible, uh, spending time with God. And uh, just want to encourage you about your personal time with God. I just got back from a prayer meeting with some young guys. I woke up this morning about 5, 5.30 and drove into town. Uh, it takes me about 40 minutes to get in there and we pray for an hour or so. And I'd just like to share with you some of the things that, that came up in that prayer meeting. I'm mentoring some young business guys in in their personal relationship with God and having devotional time. See, I never want to waste my time with God. I never want to waste time seeking him or in a devotional setting. What do I mean by devotional? Uh, what what that means is taking time to set aside to devote to reaching out and connecting with our creator. Why? Because there's something amazing that happens when we when we connect with God. He connects with us. We have life and we experience more and better life in the process. And my passion for you is that you would experience that as well. So I'd just like to encourage you in that and, and share some things this morning. And uh, so when I got to the prayer meeting with these guys, we just started to open up and started to pray. But before I got there, I was listening to some worship music on the way in in the vehicle. And as I'm listening to some of these songs and just opening up my heart, I was quite uh, uh, tired because it was early and I'd wipe the sleep out of my eyes, and you know, uh, soaking in God as I'm driving along. Had this thought, what is it that actually stops people enjoying time spent in these devotional activities, things like prayer, things like worship or, or reading the word of God, having, having the Bible opened and, and reading these things. And sometimes it seems like a chore or a, or a job or something, you know, where, where we feel like people feel at times like, hey, why am I doing this? Well, I just want to encourage you in the fact that that's not God's plan for our lives. His heart and his desire is for each one of us to enjoy his presence to enjoy the encounter, rich environment of coming around our creator. And I believe the number one reason why people don't enjoy devotional time and the reason why they don't do it is because when they enter in, they they rely on the brain and the intellect and they don't actually get to the place of receiving revelation, inspiration, epiphanies, breakthroughs, God encounters God speaking, or even hearing the voice of God for themselves, maybe not in their ear, but in their heart. And uh, I wouldn't say that I've ever heard God speak into my ear. I've heard my wife many times, but not God. And uh, But I do hear him a lot in my heart and in my out of my spirit. See, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus in, in John chapter 3 and spoke about the fact that you must be born again, have a spiritual rebirth so that now we can have a spiritual relationship with God. We can hear his voice in our in our heart. How do you hear the voice of God? You simply have the resonance of God's voice uh, residing on the inside of us as he speaks. We, we hear the resonance of that resonating out of our spirit and it overflows into our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our feelings, sensations, epiphanies, insight like when you talk about the the inner eye or the inner sight of a human we could have that capacity to see to have visions and experiences with god and that can overflow out into the natural realm into our our senses our sight our hearing sensing him in our physical body and so there's a lot of things that can happen when we encounter god and we can really enjoy the experience and one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible is in the in, when we look at the book of Revelation, how it was written. John was exiled or sent away to the to the island of Patmos uh, for 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 the word of God and the teaching and the preaching of the scriptures, and and he was exiled or uh, uh, you know sent away. And so here I wrote in my notes when I got home. It says in Revelation chapter one verse ten, and it goes on in verse eleven as well. On the Lord's day, John spoke, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. And it was amazing because he was in the spirit 
on the Lord's day. And so what that says to me is, even though he was on this island, he didn't have um, books. He might have had parchments, I'm not sure, but he didn't have books. He didn't have uh, iPhone. He didn't have computer. He didn't have all these books in the library. He didn't have many uh, things. He didn't have anyone to speak to. He didn't have the radio, didn't have a telephone, didn't have television, and didn't have, obviously, the internet. And so he was alone, isolated on this island. And so what did he do? He was in the spirit on the, on the Lord's day. What drew him into the spirit was the fact that he had an intimate personal relationship with God. He was excited about being in the spirit. And I don't think it was only on the Lord's day that he was in the spirit, but that was just an explanation of what happened on this particular day. I believe that he enjoyed coming into the presence of God. Why? Because it was a real living experience where he encountered the presence, had revelation freely and and experienced God in his, his emotions, his feelings, even in sight and in his hearing and many things. And so it said there when we read that out of the New International Version, it said that, Um, On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice. And it's amazing the fact that that he heard a voice behind him. And then we we read on and it says that he turned around and he saw uh, what where the voice came from lampstand and um, and and we just see that he he heard and he saw some things in the spirit. And so he was, what do I mean by being in the spirit? He was in in the influence of the Holy Spirit, in the realm of the spirit led by God, even though he was on the island of Patmos, even though he was standing in a location or sitting in a location, he heard a voice behind him. It may have come out of his inner being, out of his spirit and flowed through his soul and into his ear, or literally the spirit of God spoke to him uh, from behind Christ, the spirit of Christ. And uh, we might have, that might have been what happened, but he had an experience, an encounter. Then he turned around and he saw. And then as he wrote, as you read the book of Revelation, there are many things that he uh, turned to. The, it's the last book in the New Testament. Uh, he, he read, there's so many things he saw, sights, sounds and impressions, and it got deeper and it went into, into a deeper realm. And so when we get into this devotional experience with God, we're not looking just to have a dry experience. And I want to encourage you that there, that we can hope for and believe for and expect a greater experience. Let's have a look at a, um, a person, Paul. Think about him. And there were times where he, before he was Paul, he was known as Saul and he hated Christians. He was persecuting believers. He was fighting against Jesus Christ. And yet, Jesus reached out to him through the power of the Holy Spirit and gave him an epiphany and gave him an experience where he heard the voice of God and and was converted on the road to Damascus and had an amazing experience. Here he is, a non-believer, a Jewish religious man, a Pharisee, and uh, who was persecuting the church and he heard the voice of Jesus. How much more us believers, us Christians, the ones who who devote our lives to Christ, who love God, who who worship, who love reading the word of God, love the New Testament scriptures, the stories about Jesus. How much more can we hear the voice of our Savior? And so I just think there there are times where the church has been duped. We've been lulled into a false sense of deception where we think we can't hear from God, where in actual fact we've been created and redesigned and refashioned to resonate his voice. Our spirit man on the inside reverberates and resonates in the spirit, the voice of God, and it overflows up through our mind and out out of our soul. But the problem is, is we don't allow our soul to let go you know, Jesus said, if you seek to save your life, you lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake and the gospel, you will find life. And a lot of times this even goes to the point of keeping our own thoughts. We want to maintain control. We want to be the ones in control of our thoughts, our emotions, our mindsets. Heaven forbid 
that we would ever get excited about God or excited about the present or that we'd even feel his presence or close our eyes and sense his closeness. Hey, come on, come on, look, let's just read a little bit about Paul and how he had that experience. And let's go to Acts chapter 9 and uh, we're going to have a have a quick brief look at uh, this, the situation there where Paul was actually uh, overflown and moved on by the Spirit in such a way that he encountered Jesus. Now, um, I believe it's in Acts chapter 9 and we see that, oh, here we go, Saul encounters Jesus. Let's have a let's have a read through this. So during these days, Saul, full of anger, her angry threats and rage, wanted to uh, murder. Did you hear that? He wanted to murder Christians. <laughs> so he wanted to murder uh, the, the, the disciples of the Lord Jesus. So he went to ask the high priest and request a letter of authorization he could take to the Jewish leaders in Damascus, requesting their cooperation in finding and arresting any who were followers of the way. Christians, believers, followers of Christ, this this new way of living. And uh, Saul wanted to capture all of the believers he found, both men and women, drag them as prisoners back to Jerusalem. Did you hear that? He wanted to drag them as prisoners. That doesn't sound like someone who's going to hear the voice of Jesus. That doesn't sound like someone who's just about to receive revelation. And so here we go. Uh, prisoners back to Jerusalem. So he obtained the uh, the authorization and left for Damascus. Just outside the city, a brilliant light flashing from heaven suddenly exploded all around him. Falling to the ground, he heard a booming voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So he heard a booming voice. Did you hear that was a massive, booming, amazing voice? And now the people who were around him, his, the other people following him were amazed because they heard the voice as well, but they didn't see anything. And uh, we, we just read earlier how, how John on the island of Patmos heard a loud voice. So here we see John, a believer, exiled on the island, hearing a loud voice. And yet a non-believer, someone persecuting the church, wanting to destroy, kill and, and drag them off to prison, hearing a booming voice. And we hear later on in Paul's testimony about his salvation and his experience there, it was the grace and mercy of God that reached out to him and called him to be an apostle, called him into relationship with Jesus. So we hear about people in the Muslim world or in other other uh, areas of the world having these encounters with Jesus Christ. They might be non-believers and then all of a sudden into their bedroom walks Jesus Christ. They have a, 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 an epiphany, an experience, a revelation of Jesus and they encounter him. He speaks to them. They open their heart. They get born again. And this is an amazing thing. And, and, you know, hopefully this really brings some sort of hope or expectation that we as believers can simply hear the voice of God. And this is the wonderful thing to be able to hear Jesus, to be able to be influenced by the Holy Spirit, to have encounters, to, to see things, to hear things, to know things that, that God can give revelation. He can give insight, understanding and really excite our time in devotional living as we're reading through the scriptures or as we're closing our eyes in prayer or as we're lifting up to God in a, in a worshipful heart and song. So long as we're not taking hold in our soul, we're not captivating ourselves by by being closed-minded, by opening our soul, opening our mind and letting go to God. You know, the scriptures say that if we ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, we'll not be given some other spirit. And so I don't see how fear can come around a believer that says, hey, if I just let go, if I open up and let God come around my life, how can there be something fearful in that? And I know in the presence of God, there's much peace, there's much joy, there's much tranquility. Even now as we're in this video, I just want you to sit back and rest and relax and enjoy the peace 
of God's presence. I just feel his peace in this library right now as I'm talking about the Prince of Peace, Jesus, the presence of God's spirit, the peace of God that passes understanding. And we've got to understand that in our hearts we can receive infinite peace and tranquility. You know, the, the, the world is full of chaos. And when we turn aside and we take these times in devotional living and seeking our God, it's not, it's not that we just keep pushing through with our mind. It's we let go to receive. See, the moment you start to receive in your personal devotional life, all of a sudden the encounters become rich. They become powerful. And we start to sense and enjoy the anointing and the sovereign touch of God's hand on our lives. And really, that's what makes this whole experience enjoyable. That's how they write amazing songs. That's how the scriptures were, were written. The Bible says it's God breathed. A, <laughs> the scriptures, the word of God was breathed by the Holy Spirit. And so as we read the word, as we, as we open this book up, as we worship God in the spirit. So let's dive into this a little bit more. When I talk about being in the spirit, I'm talking about being uh, overflown, over, overtaken, sorry, by the spirit. And we, we could even go to the book of Acts and have a look there. And we can see in Acts chapter, um, at, at, I think it's chapter two there, that um, we're looking in the, in the day of Pentecost arrived and, and they experienced uh, the, the presence of God. Let's just jump into that. Come on, Acts chapter 2, where are you? There you are. And so let's have a look at this. And we see here that um, Peter was in there. He, uh, Peter continued, people of Israel, listen to the facts. Jesus, the victorious, was a man on a divine mission. And so here is talking a little bit about the the um, the, the preaching that that Peter gave after their Pentecost experience. He started to talk to them about Jesus and who he was. And really, he had not prepared that message. That was inspired preaching, prophetic, inspired utterance, where he was speaking as of the oracles of God. And literally, what do I mean by that? He, God was speaking through him. He'd just been in an encounter-rich environment. They, uh, Jesus had left the planet. <laughs> just like Elvis left the building, Jesus left the planet and they went to this place called the upper room for 10 days. And there were 120 of them in there on this 10th day. And they're seeking and soaking in the presence of God before, um, bef sorry, before the Holy Spirit poured out. Sorry, they were seeking. But then on, on um, Acts uh, chapter two, the day of Pentecost, they were overflown, baptized, soaked in the and in the presence. And so I'd like to open that up here a little bit and let you see it. It says here in Acts chapter two, on the day of Pentecost was was uh, sorry, on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house. Oh my. Here's an experience where they heard the sound of a violent rush of wind. And so they heard something. They, were, they didn't know what they were going to experience. They were seeking God. They, Peter had just, he had just thrown some dice and, ex, and then went to, to choose the, the next apostle where maybe that might have been God's job. And so um, now they're not knowing what's coming, but they believe that there's a promise and a hope and a gift from the father and there might have been some sort of sense that the that of what was coming but the holy spirit knew exactly what was going to happen and he poured into that room poured into that place suddenly there they heard each one of them these people in the room the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the the heavenly realm the roar of the wind did you hear that the roar it's sort of like in these three verses we've read out today, a loud voice. Um, we, we heard the, the, how, how Paul was, uh, he encountered in a, in, a, in, a, in a mighty voice or a big, loud voice. And, and um, uh, we hear here a mighty roar. And so I don't think God's trying to be quiet with us. <laughs> I think he wants our attention. 
And I don't think it's a problem hearing his voice. I don't think there's an issue unless we're closed-minded, unless we're controlling and manipulating our own thoughts by taking control and, and not letting go. And so I, I see this, it's, 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 uh, it's a struggle for people to enjoy the presence of God, enjoy devotional life in, in bo- devotional living. When we're caught in a rut of, 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 you know, just pressing in and holding on and instead of relaxing, enjoying worship, enjoying his presence, thanking, enjoying, receiving. And on this day, they received the presence of the Holy Spirit. It says, then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. So once again, we see they, they heard and they saw. It's just like John on the island of Patmos. He heard, then he turned and he saw. So in some way, whether these are complete physical manifestations or not, I do believe that this was literally the Holy Spirit coming in and they literally did see. But I I do believe in this incurrence. Let's just keep reading for a moment. And it says they all at once, then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. Now that is a crazy, amazing experience. And uh, they were overpowered. They were, in, you know, they filled, inspired, empowered to speak with the, you know. So here's some things that are, are pretty amazing. God is not silent. God is not distant. God is not far away. And I was speaking there a little bit before about hearing and seeing. They they saw these tongues of fire. They saw this massive fire that separated and came upon each of them. And so I do believe they were given capacity in their natural eyes to see spiritual. And uh, we hear that um, the prophet in the Old Testament, his, uh, his uh, assistant said, hey, we're in trouble. But the prophet said to him, listen. There are more with us than, you know, and uh, so he opened his eyes. The, the prophet opened the assistant's eyes and he could see all the angels. He could see everybody helping. So to be able to see in the realm of the spirit, to be able to, to see the supernatural, I don't believe it's impossible for us because in the Old Testament, they weren't born again. In the New Testament, we've received Christ. We're a new creature. We're born again and we hear the voice of God in our spirit and it overflows and resonates. And if we're Opened in our mind, he can overflow and fill our thoughts. And so this is where we get revelation. This is where we get um, insight and the ability. And so that's why I believe when Jesus gave himself to prayer in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says he gave himself to prayer. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And like I, 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 I said at the prayer meeting, when he came and he was in the spirit, John was not just thinking about spiritual things. He was not just thinking on the, the scriptures or the word of God. He was not just thinking about something that was written down or, or, or things that had been spoken to him. No, he'd entered in. He'd come into an experiential environment where the Holy Ghost was there. If you see a fish in a fishbowl, the fish is in the bowl. <laughs> He's in an environment that he can swim around. He can live in and, and, and be en- enveloped by where there's life for that fish. That fish comes out of the fish bowl. That fish dies. And so we look at us as believers. We, we come out of that experiential presence of God. We can get dry. And so we must understand that there is an environment called the Spirit of God and the realm of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit teaches us about, that as we give ourselves to this, we are excited. We should never get bored in prayer, never get bored worshiping or read the Word, uh, because the Spirit of God is the environment for us to flow into. So when Jesus, uh, in, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, left the home, and went out to pray. It said he gave himself to prayer. 
And it might actually be good for us to read that again. I know I share this uh, a few times on this this um, in this experience where you come and watch online, but I, I'd like to read it again because it's it's very important for us to see in the in the word itself. Let's go to Mark, and we're going to go to chapter uh, one, and there it is. I've highlighted it again. It said there, Jesus prays, preaches, heals, and casts out demons. But let's look at verse 35 in Mark chapter 1. The next morning, Jesus got up long before daylight, left the house while it was dark, and made his way to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. And what we see there is he gave himself over to the spirit of prayer to allow the anointing, the presence of God to come around his life. And, you know, I've, I'm very determined and um, consistently choosing that when I go into my devotional times. As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of the self-life, the soul, the flesh, all those things. You, we crave security. We crave control as humans. <laughs> and it's, it's a, sometimes an insecure experience to let go and let God, to surrender and yield our mind to the, the thoughts, even the, the revelations that can spring out of the word of God. And as we come into the word, coming to them ready to surrender rather than pick and choose what we want to hear <laughs> if we... If we just come and start reading and not understanding, but definitely letting our minds just soak up whatever whatever's in there. The word is inspired. It's a gift. The word is there to teach us and train us up in, in right things. It's not there to hurt us or harm us. So, And even God's presence as we worship, as we open our hearts, as we live to adore him, live to, to explore him. We only ever led into realms of greatness, realms of wonderment. And that can never be a boring experience when you come into the presence of God and when you experience his goodness. And so we, we can't allow our soul to lie to us. Can't allow our mind and our thoughts to come and uh, say, hey, this is this is boring. You know, spending 10 minutes in the presence and going, I'm bored. Like I haven't heard from God. Wait, because... You haven't let go of your mind. You haven't let go of your soul. Take every thought in captivity to Christ and, and give and let your mind be renewed. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may be you may be, you may be able to prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What does that manifest or prove right or or let it be so? Yes, your will be done, God. <laughs> and so I look at this and I understand that it's not always easy to dive into experiences you've never had before. I've never been on the island of Patmos and, and had that experience that John had. I was never in the upper room and had that experience that those disciples had. I was never on the road to Damascus and had the experience that Saul had. But you are where you are at right now. God is an experiential God. He wants to speak clearly and loudly to us. He's not going to force himself on us. But he is going to, by his grace and mercy, Speak, speak clearly into our hearts. Give us visions, give us dreams, give us insight into his will and purposes and plans and show us a, a fresh new way of, of experiencing and exploring his presence. And, uh, you know, every time you get in the bathtub, you wash wash things off and you wash wash dirt, wash things off your body. I do believe every time we come into the presence of God, we, we wash away hindrances, pain, struggles, and um, carelessness um, Think in terms of, of not being careful. <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants to come and, and inebriate us. As I've said in the very first video, if you want to go back to that, um, we see that Paul tells us, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The translation of that is be being filled. It's a it's a commandment to come back again and again. The rivers of God never run dry. 
and uh, but Christians do because they don't open up and receive. But I, I just want to encourage you today. You, you can be filled, refreshed, soaked, inebriated. So when you get inebriated, you are consumed and overcome by the presence of, of alcohol. But if you come to the Spirit of God and be inebriated and be overcome and, and filled with his presence, you can wander away from the, the earthly things and wander into the spirit realm with God. And you're safe because you're in, you stay in your library. <laughs> you you, you uh, stay in the presence and you, you're full of peace. But God can start to lead you in his ways of devotion. And so he doesn't want to fight with us in this. He wants to draw us along in the process. So, hey, come on, let's keep going. Let's keep searching and seeking his heart. I just like to pray for you today. Just open your heart, open your mind, open your, open your head <laughs> to this prayer. Father, I just pray for everyone right now watching online, watching this telecast, this video. I'm asking you, Jesus, to pour into our spirit your anointing, your Holy Ghost. I welcome your Holy Spirit to fill us, soak us, inebriate us. We give ourselves to prayer right now. We open up to your voice, which can be loud at times. We open our eyes to see things you want us to see. We believe that we can hear your voice. We believe we've been recreated to have a relationship with you. And we just ask you to, to supersize that relationship, enhance that ability that relationship we have with you through the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak things from heaven to our hearts. Put songs in our heart, put words in our heart, put wisdom in our hearts as we read the word of God and pray and worship you. And help us to explore and enjoy this process called devotional living. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you receive that today, if you're encouraged by that today, that you'd open your heart, open your mind and enjoy the presence of God, enjoy devotional times with God experiences. I want to encourage you to, to subscribe, click on that subscribe button or share with your friends, hit the like button and, and enjoy what's happening and just share the story of encouraging others of getting into their own personal devotional times and make it real. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye for now.